Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. This is Space Crusade. For anybody who doesn't know, Space Crusade was Games Workshop's second collaboration with Milton Bradley. It came out in 1990, and in some regards, it is the 40k version of Hero Quest. In fact, in some countries, it was actually sold as Star Quest in order to cash in on the Hero Quest name. But really, it's nothing at all like Hero Quest. It focuses far less on exploration and far more on combat and is also more competitive. It also has a slightly more in-depth campaign structure where you acquire points, level up through the ranks and gain benefits from your successes. In a lot of ways, it is better than Hero Quest. Unfortunately, for some reason, it was never distributed in North America, so it hasn't entered the collective psyche as an all-time classic in the same way that Hero Quest has. But today we're going to take a little look in the box and find out a bit more what it's all about. Before we do that, I have to say a big thank you to two people. First of all, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to Stephen Evans, who sent me this copy of Space Crusade. He donated this to the channel so that I could show it and restore it and play it and share it with everybody else, which is absolutely awesome. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm always saying I have the most generous and best subscribers in the world and people keep on proving it. So this video really is only possible because of Steve Evans. Steve actually runs a Facebook group. It's called 2021, let's hope it's a better one. I'm actually a member of the group myself. Uh, well worth checking out because there's all sorts of stuff being shared over there, including um, he sometimes shares some of my stuff so you can uh, be sure that it's all good things. However, the copy that Steve donated did not have any of the Space Marine miniatures, so I still needed to acquire those. And that's where we have to thank somebody else. We have to thank Stefan. Stefan used the donate button on my channel to make a sizable donation to the channel, which was absolutely awesome. I have used those funds to pick up the few bits that were missing from this copy. So thanks to Steve and Stefan, we have a 100% complete copy of Space Crusade to look at today. Thank you so much to those guys. Anyway, what we have here is the original 1990s edition of the game with the original cover art, which showcases our Space Marines battling with some Gene Stealers and these androids, which look a little bit like Necrons, but they existed before Necrons did. Subsequent editions of the game had a different piece of artwork, which cropped in much closer on the Space Marines. And that second edition of the artwork was a little bit less violent. It didn't show anybody actually being hit by gunfire. It also showcased the big bad Dreadnought in the background, an imposing, very intimidating boss monster that we will look at in a moment. Unlike Hero Quest, Space Crusade uses a modular board setup. You get four tiles which show a combination of rooms and corridors. Each of these tiles is just shy of a foot square. And uh, there's a little symbol there. Bit suspicious. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it doesn't mean anything. And the idea is, as you create the board, you have these wall pieces. And the walls will clip on with little plastic clips between the locations and you can see this door is lining up with this corridor this door is linking these two rooms together and you will have most frequently a square with a uh, cross of walls in this sort of configuration and then you have separate doors that go on any door areas on the boards themselves each tile is different so we have our not at all suspicious tile this tile with some interesting iconography up here. We have the Lego room and then we have this room. And what this type of board does is it means the focus is pushed a little bit more towards skirmish combat. You can see there's not that many corridors. There's certainly no narrow one space wide corridors. There are lots of rooms. The rooms are quite big. 
The enemies do come onto the board as blip tokens, which are the little ping signals on the marine scanners, so you don't know what enemies you are facing to begin with, but the aim of the game is really to get in contact with those aliens and wipe them out, rather than explore the different rooms, find items, that sort of thing isn't really a part of the game. And of course that talk of ping tokens will remind people first of Space Hulk, which also uses blip tokens to disguise the nature of the enemies you are facing. And of course these games draw that idea of ping tokens or blip tokens from Aliens, the moving. Of course to go with our floor tiles we have four cardboard walls. Each cardboard wall has a plastic clip that goes on this end and then there is a central plastic clip which goes over where the four corners meet in a cross just to hold it all together. Those plastic clips do tend to chew the edges of these wall tiles. You can see there's just a little bit of chewing on that one there just there. Um, they can get really quite mashed up if people just jam the plastic pieces on without a lot of care and a lot of old copies of Space Crusade will have um, chewed up edges here and here and also um, this is quite a weak part of these wall structures. Quite often you'll see creases uh, or even rips above those doors. Additionally, you get three docking boards and these go around the edge of the main board and indicate where the different squads of Marines will enter from. There are three squads in total. There are Ultramarines, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels. So you get three of these. And the idea is you have the point where the ship is docking. You have a little plastic clip here, which clips onto the edge. If I can do it carefully on camera without chewing anything up like so and then you get an airlock blast door which goes into the clip here and then that whole assembly will attach to the edge of the board you place your squad on here and you are ready to fight the alien infestation to mark where the doors are you get 24 card doors and 24 plastic stands and here mb games sort of learnt from hero quest but also took a bit of a back step first of all um, they didn't do open and shut doors. Instead, they printed areas on the board where the door sits. You place a closed door on that area. When you open the door, you remove the door from the board completely, but you still know where the door was because of that part that was printed on the board. That's a good thing in that you don't need to have open doorways that are going to get creased and crunched up like the old HeroQuest open archways do but it does limit the configurations of the board somewhat because you can only place a door where they have actually printed that a door should go. The other thing that's not quite so good is in HeroQuest they had the nice chunky bases for the doors to stand in and you could push those doors in and out without really damaging them. This time round we have these plastic clips and again as with the walls, as with the airlocks, you have to be a little bit careful when you squeeze your door into the clip to make sure it doesn't actually damage the bottom of the door too much. This is of course not a problem if you're going to leave the bases attached, but I've been checking out the Felder insert that you can get to keep everything safe and I believe Felder made a bit of a misstep in their design of that insert because they have made it that the bases and the cardboard doors are stored in separate compartments which means you have to pull them apart each time you are finished using them. And that means you are over time going to chew up the bottom of those card doors a little bit. I would have preferred to have seen a storage area where you could put all of the doors assembled. This game is designed for up to three players to control space marines fighting against an evil adversary, a chaos overlord who rules the space hulk. And this is the shield or screen for the evil player. It's not like the old uh, hero quest screen it's not really designed to hide information as such but it is designed to have all of the stats for the enemies in clear view and it's designed to look a little bit like a control panel or a computer screen so it has a fold here which you can very carefully fold and then it has two plastic clips that go into each end and again all of these plastic clips have the chance to ping off apparently but also to chew up your cardboard <laughs> 
It doesn't want to stay on. All of these plastic clips have the risk of chewing up the card. So be careful with them when you put them on. And where possible, uh, minimize the amount of uh, removal that you have to do. There we go. It is all assembled. And here's a sneak peek of all the enemies we will be facing. There are orcs. There are chaos marines. There's a chaos commander. There is the mighty dreadnought. There is the androids, the gene stealers, and our little Gretchen at the end there. And the information here is we can see they've got a move value, an armor value, and then they have the number of dice they roll and the type of dice they roll when firing and when fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But the Marines get something much cooler than the alien player's screen. They each get their own plastic scanner. And these scanners have sliders, and the slider here is for tracking your commander's hit points because your commander can take a number of hits before dying. And the second slider is for tracking your points as you score points throughout the game. And then up at the top there are four weapons. And each of the weapons has a little hole in it where you can place a plastic marker to designate certain things. For example, if you have an upgrade for your missile launcher, you can just pop a little marker on there like that. So of course there are three of those in the box, one in red, one in yellow, and one in blue. And because they are made with thin vacuum formed plastic, it is very common to see splits on the edges. There's not a huge amount you can do about that really. Um, you just have to try and be careful with these things. Do not stand on them, do not crush them. They are very, very thin. And subject to the vagaries of time around the edges. Each of the Marine players also gets a reference card, which has information regarding the weapons on one side um, and the close combat weapons and their movement on the reverse. And they are labeled Blood Angels, Imperial Fists and Ultramarines. There's no difference between the cards. They all have exactly the same values on them. But if you are trying to get a complete 100% copy of the game, uh, it's worth checking that the cards you're getting each have the correct names at the top because sometimes people have made uh, copies of the game by combining several part sets and they may not have paid attention to the fact that there are different names on the cards. Oh, and if you are wondering what all of these little symbols and things mean, I am hoping to do a playthrough of Space Crusade very soon on the channel. Unlike my copy of Hero Quest, which was very bashed up, this copy of Space Crusade is in very good playable condition and I'm hoping to get it to the table before I start my restoration painting project. The game includes 32 blip tokens. These are placed on the board like this and move around the board going blip, blip, blip until someone catches line of sight to them and then they are flipped over to reveal what is on the other side. Uh-oh, it's a Chaos Space Marine. So there are 32 of these in total, and that is one blip for each miniature in the game. So you get blips for eight orcs, you get blips for 14 Gretchen, you get blips for five Space Marines, you get blips for four androids, and you get a blip for a single Dreadnought. The only miniatures that don't have blips associated with them are the three Gene Stealers, and that is because they are brought into play through special alien cards. It is worth noting that there is different artwork on the reverse of the Chaos Space Marines to indicate whether it is a regular Space Marine with a bolter, a Space Marine with a grenade launcher, or the Space Marine Commander. As you can see, the blip tokens are quite small, and if you are buying a second-hand copy of Space Crusade, you may well find that you are missing one or two of these. These are the sorts of things that would get lost down the side of the sofa, under the table, um, in the vacuum cleaner, and so on. In addition to the blip tokens, you get a complete set of 32 reinforcement tokens in the same distribution, so you are getting 8 Orcs, 14 Gretchen, uh, one Chaos Commander, four Chaos Space Marines, four Androids, and the Dreadnought. And the reinforcement tokens are divided into blue for the Chaos Marines, green for the Orcs and the Gretchen, black for the Androids and the Dreadnoughts. And these are set aside at the start of the game and they are cashed in as the game is played to bring on miniatures of that particular type. So I could cash in this blue reinforcement token 
to bring my grenade launcher into play. They are nice to have, slightly less important than the blip tokens because they don't come onto the board and move around as blips. They are just cashed in for the relevant miniature. So you could do it with a, a list and just tick off the models as you use them. Um, but it's nice to have them. There are plenty more tokens in the box. You get one primary mission token and one secondary mission token. These are given to the player who achieves those different missions. So if the mission says uh, the primary mission is to destroy a dreadnought, the first player that destroys a dreadnought will get the primary mission token, which is worth 30 points. And each mission also has a secondary objective. So there's still a chance for players who miss out on the primary objective to score some decent points. As I mentioned earlier, this game has a campaign system. After each game, you work out who has won, who has scored the most points, and that player will go up in rank. And the first person to get to the fifth rank wins the campaign. All of the Space Marine players start as Sergeant, and then these tokens are double-sided. So you have Sergeant, then you have the Lieutenant Primus, then you have Lieutenant Seniorus, and Captain Primus, and then the Captain Seniorus. And once you reach Captain Seniorus, that's it, your top dog, you have won. And there is a set of similar tokens, which I'll show you in a moment for the Chaos player. So the game comes with three sets of these rank badges in red, blue, and yellow, of course. But in addition to granting a rank to the player who wins the game, there are also honor points at stake. On the reverse of the mission book, there is a combat effectiveness table, which tells you how many of these honor badges you will score for completing the mission, even though you weren't the actual winner. And eventually, you can cash in these honor badges to go up a rank. There are only six of these badges in the game. They are actually double-sided. There's a one and a two one, and then a three and a four one. And then of course, there's three of each of those tokens so that you have enough for all of your Marine players. And the fun thing about the rank badges is you can pop them in there just to remind yourself how awesome you're being. And as I mentioned, there's a set of these for the Chaos player, starting from a measly Chaos Renegade and working up to a Lord of Chaos. And you also get a set of Chaos Marks, which are the same as the Honor Badges. The final markers or tokens you get in the game are these plastic ones. There are four in red, four in yellow, four in blue, and they are used on those Commander Scanners to keep track of which of your weapons have special abilities. In the case of a lot of the little cardboard tokens, you can play the game without them. You can just use pieces of paper to track things like your honor level. You can use a blob of blue tack to mark which of your weapons have got special upgrades. But the one thing that you really can't do without is the combat dice. You get a set of four white ones and two red ones. And these are used for resolving all of the combats in the game. The white dice are the weakest ones. They have a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero, and then a one on that face, and a two on that face. The red dice are for heavy and special weapons, and they have a zero, a zero, a zero, but then they have a two there, they have a one there, and they have the blessed three on the final side. And yes, of course, you could sub in regular D6 and designate different values to the different faces. So you could play without the dice. I say you can't, you could, but it's going to be a lot harder. It's going to be a lot, a lot more difficult to keep track of what people are rolling. Really, it's so much easier to have a set of these. The game also comes with a deck of cards. You get 28 alien event cards and most of these are bad things that are going to throw a spanner in the works for the marine player for example this will summon a gene stealer um, this one will allow you to redeploy some of your blips and place them somewhere else on the board but there are some good things in here as well for example um, what have we got? Booby trap, that's not good. But we have like this card, which is new orders. Play this card on one of the marine players. He may then pick one extra order card. So that's a good thing for the marine player. Um, but they're generally bad things that are going to cause problems like auto defenses and weapon jams. A classic for anybody who plays Space Hulk. You also get three sets of 12 marine cards. And these are divided into two types. Each set of cards will have four orders 
and then the rest are equipment cards. And at the start of each game, you get to pick one order card based on your rank. So you can have up to four. And then you get to pick four equipment cards as standard. And then you can pick additional items if you have um, some honor badges stashed away. And these do different things. The uh, orders are one use items that let you do something powerful like move your whole squad again. And then you have different pieces of equipment that can do things like um, like suspensers that will make your um, your heavy weapons light weapons so you can move faster. Um, you can give your commander a combi weapon. There's some melter bombs which you can use for blowing up dreadnoughts. All good stuff. And the good thing is each set of 12 cards is different. So the Imperial Fists will play different to the Ultramarines and the Ultramarines will play different to the Blood Angels. Then of course you get a rule book. And one of my favorite things about this rule book is it has a piece of micro fiction inside the pages. And it is micro fiction done entirely through Vox comms. And this really captured my imagination when I was a kid. When I first got this game, I thought this was a really fascinating thing. So you just get these little status updates um, as you go through the rule book. You get some nice pictures to go with it, but um, you get the little communications from the commander telling his team what to expect. And it's just a little something that helps to set the scene of the game and... Uh, Things go badly for our team in the story, and I really liked it. And it's something that um, kind of made a reappearance in Death Watch Overkill, where throughout the rules book they scattered little pieces of Voxcom chatter. And I felt at the time that it might have been a little reference back to Space Crusade. But then that might just be because... It was one of those things, one of the things about Space Crusade that really sort of captured in my memory. And then we have our mission book, 12 missions in total. Make sure if you are buying this game secondhand that you have a back cover because the back cover is where you will find your combat effectiveness table, which will tell you how many awards you get at the end of each game. Phew, that's a lot of stuff. But now we get to the plastic goodness. This game is crammed with miniatures. First up, we have our androids, our evil robots, our proto-necrons. They are awesome. They obviously have a little bit of the Hero Quest skeleton vibe about them. They have uh, very menacing faces. They are a little bit like a T-800. They are one of the nastier enemies in the game. So you get four of those androids, then you get three of these gene stealers. And I think these could well be exactly the same sculpts as the old Space Hulk ones. I don't have an original Space Hulk to compare, but I think they are. They are, anyway, the classic lunging gene stealer. You get a squad of Chaos Marines, and it is worth noting that quite a few of these miniatures require a small amount of assembly. The Gene Stealers have arms that push in, the Chaos Marines have uh, a weapon on a plug that you have to push in, and then also a backpack is on a plug that you have to push in. It's not massive amounts of assembly, but there is a little bit more than there was in Hero Quest. There's a lot more pieces that are multi-piece miniatures. So you get three of these guys that have bolters. You get one with a grenade launcher. And then you get the Chaos Commander with the heavy bolter and the really nicely detailed armor. Very ornate. He's a bit show-offy. You get 14 Gretchen, all capering. And they have different weapons. They're, they are sculpted with different weapons. But those different sculpts don't have any impact on the game. So if you ever get a parts copy of Space Crusade, you can just grab any old Gretchen miniatures to fill out the horde. And then you get eight orcs. And again, they have different um, hand weapons. They have cleavers, knives, axes, but it doesn't have any in-game impact. The final enemy is the big boss, the all-powerful Ed 209. This is a Chaos Dreadnought. And the cool thing about this guy is he has weapon platforms and an optional weapon swap out. So you can give him an assault cannon, you can give him a plasma gun, 
or you can give him a missile launcher. It's really nice to have those different weapon options so that you can surprise your Space Marine players. The final miniatures in the box are our squads of Space Marines. There are three five-man squads, one in blue, one in red, one in yellow. And each miniature is a multi-part miniature. They have backpacks which plug on to the back, and then they have interchangeable weapons which just push on on stems. And it is worth noting that over the time, with those weapons being pushed in and pulled out, some of those stems will break, some of those will be broken. I intend to actually magnetize these miniatures, and I will do a video on that at some point, so that it's easier to swap the weapons out. And the reason you have to swap the weapons out is because when you start a mission, you can adjust your team's loadout. The only restriction is you must have at least one heavy weapon. So you could take one heavy weapon, three bolters and a commander, or you could take two heavy weapons, two bolters and a commander, or whatever. Your weapon options are the grenade launcher, the assault cannon, the plasma gun, the regular bolter, and then we have our commander. Commanders have different weapon options. This is our ultramarine, so he has gone for the uh, axe and bolter combo because that way he can be more versatile. The other commander options are the Heavy Bolter or the Blood Angel's favourite, the Power Fist and Power Sword combo. To be able to create any combination of squad loadouts that you want, each of your squads should have one Heavy Bolter for the commander, one Power Fist for the commander, one Power Axe for the commander, three Bolters, one Grenade Launcher, one Assault Cannon and one Plasma Gun. If you have all of those options, you have a complete squad. And that is it. That is Space Crusade, an embarrassment of riches in a box. It really does have so much content packed in there, and it is a huge amount of fun. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I am hoping to do a playthrough on the channel relatively soon. And of course, I want to do painting for the miniatures. I want to do some restoration. My box is a little blown out on the corners. Um, I'm probably going to pick up the Felder insert, despite the fact it's got um, a few design choices that I'm not so keen on. We're going to magnetize the Marines. Lots of good stuff coming up once I have finally finished my HeroQuest restoration project. Speaking of which, I better get back to that now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.